Hey, Mark Oldman, back with the dogs. You knew I couldn't stay away. So guess what? We're going to do dogs and red wine today with footage I took at the Westminster Dog Show, the big famous dog show backstage. And believe it or not, we're going to name a best in show. So check this out. This is symbolizing this endeavor. There's, there's nothing like a dog and wine. Wine gone to the dogs. So get ready. Are you ready, Fido? Yes. Good boy. Good boy. Are you guys ready? All right. <laughs> First one, Beaujolais. You know about Beaujolais. It's from the Gamay grape. This is the Georges de Bouffe Beaujolais Village. It's the flower label. Very trusty wine. You pour it. It has a kind of translucent look to it. You can see through it. And then you smell it. Mmm, floral. Slight bit of chocolate on the nose there. Mm. You taste it immediately, you can tell it's light bodied. It's simple, but it's delicious. What dog is like that? It's got to be a terrier. It, you know, what kind of terrier? It's the smooth fox terrier. And this is a sprightly, active, full of life, utterly charming dog. And Beaujolais is utterly charming. Both are perfect for a summer day, you're hanging out on your hammock, you got your terrier, you got your Beaujolais, life is good. Next up, Merlot. Now I know what you're saying, I don't want to drink Merlot, I saw sideways, miles and sideways. Let me tell you something, Merlot is like a stock that's low right now, buy low. And you know what? There's some really good values out there. Not all Merlot is bad. I call Merlot Cabernet without the pain because it's soft and it's sweet. But guess what? People think of Merlot like this dog. Ah! The Doberman Pinscher! But guess what? Look, see the Doberman can be docile and sweet. And anyway, I don't think of Merlot as a Doberman. I actually think of Merlot as this dog. That's right, Golden Retriever. Yes, and look, a lab. So Merlot's kind of like a Golden Retriever, a lab. It's immensely popular. And you know, some insiders hate on it because it's so popular. It doesn't, it's not strange enough. It's not arcane enough, but guess what? It can bring incredible pleasure. It's very eager to please. And you know, both of these dog types are possessive of a soft mouth. That is, they can hold things. They've been bred to hold things in their mouth and not chomp down, not bite down. Uh, this was back when they were hunting dogs and, you know, the, the owners didn't want them to chomp into the prey. And similarly, Merlot is soft. It's not going to have the bitter, gum-numbing tannins that a lot of other red wines can have. Next up, Malbec. More and more people are learning about Malbec. In fact, I think it's finally reaching prime time right now. And what dog are we talking about now? None other than the St. Bernard. Oh yes, the mythical big mountain dog, trailblazer. It's a rescue dog and I think of Malbec as a rescue wine. Because when I'm in a restaurant and I can't afford a big famous California Cabernet or, or a fancy Bordeaux, the Malbec sometimes will be the affordably priced red rich wine. Like a St. Bernard, it's big, it's rich, it's plush, but it's a gentle giant. It usually doesn't burn you with, with really harsh tannins. And this one, the Catena. Oh, it's beautifully polished. It's a big, big wine, but it's smooth. And like our St. Bernard, it's made for meat. I mean, St. Bernard, it's got those folds in its mouth and it's, it's always drooling. And what does it really drool for? It drools for meat. And so does a great Malbec from Argentina. Good old Zin. What dog? 
Burmese Mountain Dog. Look at that tri-color coat, brown, black, kind of a rust color there. And it's a big, big dog, and so is Zin, but they're both playful. Zin, you know, Zin has its own clubs, inspires its own kind of organizations out in California. People who love Zen tend to be a fun-loving crowd. And when you look at this Burmese Mountain Dog, I mean, that has a lot of personality. It's also a great worker dog. It can pull. In fact, in the old days, it was kind of pulled these big carts. And Zen, I think of as just a great workhorse of a wine. It's big and rich with blackberries. This is the dash and this kind of characteristic pepperiness, which just adds to the personality and makes it like a Burmese mountain dog. Okay, now we're on to red Bordeaux. I have a bottle of Chateau Montbousquet here. And what you should know is red Bordeaux is a blend of red grapes, often dominated by Cabernet Sauvignon. This one is dominated by Merlot, but check this out. It's kind of a big, rich wine here, or at least it's looking pretty opaque to me. You smell it. And the thing about Bordeaux, good Bordeaux, like Montbousquet, is it's like an English setter. It's lean and aristocratic. It's a big dog, just like Bordeaux is medium-bodied to full-bodied. But you see those spots on the setter? It's got complexity. And it's got kind of this aristocratic bearing to it. So you can think of Red Bordeaux as the aristocratic or the dignified, the elegant version of Cabernet or Merlot. There are other grapes usually mixed into it in smaller quantities. But when you smell this, mmm, tobacco leaves and kind of a earthiness that you don't get in a lot of wines from California and other places in the New World. Kind of a cedar box or tobacco box earthiness. The English love their uh, Bordeaux. They're crazy about it. They, they, they call it claret. And this is an English setter. So English on English, we have our dog wine match. Next up, Cabernet Sauvignon. Related to Bordeaux, and that Bordeaux often has good quantities of Cabernet Sauvignon in it. This is varietal Cabernet Sauvignon, the Cameron Hughes, which is a great value wine. And smell this. Mmm, that's a big, rich, blueberry, blackberry smell. When you taste it, mmm, wow, it explodes with flavor. So, it's got to be the Great Dane. Yes, this big, smoothly muscled dog. I mean, sometimes it, could, it was actually bred for aggression, believe it or not. Now they're like gentle giants. Cabernet Sauvignon, when it's young, it's the type of grape, and the folks in Bordeaux know this too, that in its youth, it can be gum-numbingly astringent. It can be quite puckery, as we say in the wine world. But then as time goes on, some of that tannic astringency mellows out, and fruit comes out, and other flavors and, and aromas come out underneath. This Cameron Hughes is ready to go. This is, this is the modern-day Great Dane. This is the sweet, lovable, just wants to curl up on the couch Great Dane. Marmaduke Astro Scooby-Doo. So every dog show needs a best in show, and we're going to have one too. What is it? Are you ready? Pinot Noir. And, check it out, we have two manifestations of Pinot Noir. We have this wine, which is red burgundy, technically a showy lay bone. You need to know that, except that, know that red burgundy is the Pinot Noir grape. It won't be labeled as that because... Uh, Europe and especially the French like to label by the region. But look at how translucent that is. And then when you smell it, wow, there's a bit of cherry, 
but you get a lot of earth or maybe even minerals. It's like rain on pavement. And then you taste it. Mm. That is not the tooth staining Zin or Cabernet like what we've had. It's light. It, there's a lot of finesse on the palate. It's delicate. This is why they call Pinot or Red Burgundy a feminine wine versus the Barolo or Brunello or Cabernet or Zin that are, are more masculine. Then we have an American version of Pinot, a New World version. This is the Willamette Valley Vineyards Pinot Noir. And you pour this, and you can see it's similarly translucent, but when you give it a hit here, it's much more fruit forward. You get raspberries and cherries versus a lot of earth. Mm. And you taste it. It's, it's light. It's a little richer than the red burgundy, but it's light on the palate. And th what dog can this be? There's only one dog. There's only one dog that can be best in show, and this is Hickory. Remember Hickory from the news? This is the Scottish Deer Hound. It is a long, lean, greyhound-like, dignified, regal dog. And like Burgundy or Pinot Noir, these aren't wa the watchdogs of wine. This is more the beautiful kind of art dog, um, more subtle. Um, very complex, but it's not going to jump out at you on the street. It's going to be a little more dignified and a little more elegant. And that's what you get in your Pinot Noir or your Red Burgundy. I hope you enjoyed my relating dogs with wine. I remain, and I am humbly, Mark Oldman coming at you from the dog pound, exhorting you to please push it.